If you have a long enough memory, you will recall that I was working on interfacing a video chip to my 6502 computer um, so that I can get color graphics and text out. And the particular chip I was using um, was the TMS 9918A. Um, that's a video chip that was used in the TI-994A computer as well as in the first generation of MSX machines. And so this was the circuit that I was working on um, that I've shown before. Uh, the video chip is, is up here. Um, this is a static RAM chip for the video RAM. And then the extra circuitry is needed to interface the static RAM to the TMS chip because the TMS chip expects dynamic RAM. Um, and so we have some, some latches and things to sort of handle, handle the timing. And if you remember our previous videos, it seemed to be basically working, but I wasn't able to get a workable video signal out of it, anything that I could recognize as being a video signal with the oscilloscope or anything that would um, display output on, the, uh, on, on a monitor. Now, the other day, I was watching a video on uh, Noel's Retrolab uh, channel. Um, I'll put a link in the, in the description below. And he'd been working on a SpectraVision system that uses this chip, and he suspected that the chip he had bought on eBay was a fake. Um, there's a lot of fake chips around. So his video has some great, chips on, great tips on detecting fake chips. But one thing that he found for these video chips in particular was a test harness that uses an Arduino to generate minimal control signals to test the chip in isolation so you don't have to do all the rest of that stuff. So that's what I want to do and what I've got here. So if I just move this out of the way for a moment, um, what we actually want to look at today is, is this. Um, let me just make sure that it's all in the frame. Um, so, so what we have here is an Arduino that's connected up to my, to my laptop um, running a sketch that um, uses these I.O. pins to send control signals to this, which is a TMS 9918A. Um, I had a second one in addition to the one that was in there, so that's what I've used in, used in here. Um, and so it's really pretty basic. As you can see, it's not using any video RAM because it's really not trying to display real video. It's not trying to display actual text or graphics. Um, what it actually just does is flashes the screen um, different colors just so that you can see whether your, um, whether your TMS chip is, is working. So let's just have a little um, poke around with this. Um, so let's see. Um, so I just wanted to show you first. Um, this is the this is the basic circuit that I've been that I've been following. I'll put a link in for that as well, so that you can see it. And that circuit was originally built not for my chip, not for the um, 9918A, uh, but for the 9129, which is a slightly different version of the chip that's in the same family. But fortunately, when I looked at the pinouts here. Um, it turned out that almost everything was identical. All the control lines were had the same pinout, so I didn't have to make any changes um, to the circuit. The only thing that's different is that the uh, 2129 gives you component out, um, whereas the 19, 9918A gives you composite out. Um, so the, the output signals are different. But let's just look around with the, with the oscilloscope here to see what's going on. So maybe the first thing to check is the, um, is the clock crystal, the clock, clock signal here. Whoops. So the clock, the, the chip has its own clock for generating a video signal. And you can see on the oscilloscope there that we, uh, you know, we have a nice, nice oscillation happening. So, um, so that's one good sign to start with. Um, maybe the next thing to do is to look at a data line, and I think the easiest one to get to is the one down here. So let's just see what's going on with that. Okay, um, so it's periodically um, going up, and you can see that, I let's see, my oscilloscope is set to two volts per division, so that's going from uh, up by two and a half divisions, so it's going from zero to five. So it looks like we have um, proper, uh, you know, signals going on, going on there. So it looks like something's working. 
Um, and so maybe the last thing to look at, uh, if I take it on here, is the actual thing that might be the, where hopefully this is the video signal out. So we're seeing something that's moving around at roughly the same rate that it was before, which is probably a good sign. Let's see if I can, ah um, uh, yeah, you see, that's good. That's sort of beginning to look like a video signal to me. We can see the the color burst and we can see the, um, the what do they call on the front porch and the back porch. We're starting to see something that really looks like a video signal. So I think we're actually getting um, getting a decent a decent signal out of this. So maybe the next thing to do would be to try and hook up an actual monitor to that. Um, so so let me let me just pull one over. I've got this monitor that I was using before. Let's see if I can get this into the frame in some reasonable way. Um, yeah, there we go, that'll do. Um, and uh, let's see if I can hook this up. That one goes to ground. This one comes over here. And then I actually have to turn the monitor, turn the monitor on, give it some power, and let's see what we get. Aha, uh -huh. and we actually have something happening. Now, as I said, this isn't actually going to display us any uh, real uh, video, but what it does do is it changes the background color and the border color. So um, this, it's just sort of cycling through different colors. So let's see if we can see some other colors. Okay, there we go, we're getting green. I'm not quite sure what else is going on. There's clearly, um, it's pretty messy, right? So, so the, the, the way this LCD screen is displaying things is not necessarily the best. Um, I haven't done proper impedance matching on the, um, on the output but it's showing us that the chip is, is working. Um, in, if this were its Noel's case, it would show us that the chip wasn't fake, but it's also showing me that it's working. It's showing me that I'm, you know, something that I'm doing, I'm able to sort of generate those signals and I'm able to see them, and I should be able to use this monitor to debug things. So I think one thing I might do is to um, put the chip that I was using before into the same test harness and see if that works. That would be, that would be interesting. But more to the point, now that I'm feeling confident that this chip is working, um, I think I'm just going to rebuild my circuit. Mainly because this breadboard's been moved around a lot and it probably bashed around moved as I took the lab apart and had to put it back together again. So um, I'm not no longer confident in the um, in the signal integrity. Um, so we'll sort of try try building a new one based instead around this chip and see where we get to.